Unwedding Podcast. I'm Karina. And I'm Sydney. We're two neurodiverse wedding planners who are committed to empowering nearlyweds to throw out the wedding rulebook, shrink their guest lists, and create a meaningful, purposeful wedding experience. We're taking the wedding industry by storm and disrupting the status quo. We're the Unwedding Planners, and we invite you to join our movement. We record our podcast from Treaty 6 Territory, a traditional gathering place for diverse Indigenous peoples, including the Cree, Blackfoot, Métis, Nakota Sioux, Iroquois, Dene, Ojibwe, Salto, Anishinaabe, Inuit, and many others whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. Welcome to the first episode in our new series on the Unwedding Podcast, What to Do After You Get Engaged. Engagement season is upon us. It's the 12 weeks between American Thanksgiving and Valentine's Day. An estimated 40% of couples get engaged in this time. Uh, we're going to break down what you should do both immediately after getting engaged and what to do in the days, weeks, and months after, not only to help you rock your wedding planning journey, but also to set the tone for your engagement, an all-important and often glazed-over stage of intimate relationships. In this week's episode, we're going to be breaking down some of the steps you can take immediately after that ring drops and in the days following. We have tips on how to share the news with loved ones on social media, all while focusing on your relationship and setting this tone for this all-important next stage of your relationship, transitioning from being a dating couple to an engaged one. And the first thing, take a breath. That's a, re a good reminder. I just need to. <laughs> I actually needed to do that, so it's it's good. Yeah. Okay. So we just gotta take this moment. Yes, uh, <laughs> I will. I will, Karina. Um, and just yeah, let it sink into it. it. It like let us sink into this moment before you know telling anybody, and not anybody as in like keep it keep it secret, keep it safe. But you know, there's probably people that are already in on this, whether they helped with ring shopping or they helped with the planning for the proposal itself, or they just knew what was going on in conversation. Well, you know, I, I do think there's this, you know, thing that happens in our society, and especially with something um, like uh, something big, like an engagement or having a baby or buying a mm -hmm. house, where it is definitely this big milestone moment and then naturally you're excited and you want to share that detail that that that's happened but sharing for us is so different than it was even 20 years ago yeah like don't get me wrong like when I got engaged 12 years ish ago you know this idea of sharing it on social media you know this is pre-instagram pre-tiktok you know pre most of the modern platforms you know snapchat mm -hmm. um it was mostly facebook yeah only facebook um and yeah you definitely there was this whole thing at the time around changing your relationship status oh yeah um i don't know if you remember those days. oh i remember <laughs> I remember the days, I remember little anarchist me refusing to put single on my profile because if it had to be single, then it would mean it would change when a man entered into my life and <laughs> no way, Jose. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely a little different there. Um, but yeah, there's this like huge thing about, you know, your relationship status changing. So that was very much yeah. me. But, you know, in this day and age, I think... There's this idea of like, we got to get the word out. We want to share. And it's very natural to be excited. But, you know, I think there's something to be said about, you know, we're talking a lot more in our society today about being present in the moment, yeah. practicing gratitude or taking that breath. And I think when we're talking about engagement, it's to not rush into all that excitement necessarily. I'm not saying you're not allowed to be engaged. You know, be excited. This is big. But just taking that, that moment to step back and take that deep breath and just... Yeah enjoy this moment and it could be you know three minutes it could be 30 minutes it can be three weeks it can be three months but it's actually just allowing that time to very naturally yeah. you know be focused on the fact that you are going through this huge transition in your relationship um and not necessarily rushing on to the next thing and especially because if people like know what's the first thing they do but ask for details and ask for information and you may be ready to share the news but not necessarily ready to share plans or you may not have plans you may not have you know pinterest boards full of ideas like some people we know like maybe i do or have that. <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe hey, no you shame. don't have answers no at the tip of your tongue right and and 
I think what's most important is realizing that you may be asked for this information. Are you even prepared to start thinking about it? Because whether yeah. you want to or not, somebody is going to ask and that is going to start that. So are you ready to start thinking about it? If not, maybe don't tell anyone. Especially if you've decided to have a longer engagement. Yeah. You know, more and more as couples are paying for their own weddings, especially, we're seeing them set two years, sometimes even three years or more, out from the date they get engaged because they want to save the money to be able to have their wed the wedding that they want in the mm -hmm. way that they want. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to, you know, you know, as soon as you, like you say, as soon as you start telling people, you typically invite that moment. Oh, when you get married, mm -hmm. which then also invites that other lovely question. And when you're having a baby, mm -hmm. right, you know, it, it's always like we're rushing ourselves to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to say, I'm not prepared to talk about wedding planning yeah. yet. Yeah. I am, I'm prepared to just be engaged and to absorb myself in this moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to be honest, wedding planning in and of itself um it, it definitely can be on a shorter time frame. I don't recommend it simply for, you know, if you want certain vendors or things like that. But a wedding can be planned within the scope of a year. So if you're talking about a two or a three year or, you know, longer engagement, it's totally okay to, to, to yeah. make that, that break as long as you want. Well, think about it in a year or two. Okay, why not, right? And also, too, I think so often an engagement is seen as almost a means to an end. You know, it's like, hey, we're, we've, we've done this whole ring thing, which means we're going to be married. But, you know, it's not, it's not, okay, now you're super seriously dating, right? An engaged person would probably resent that <laughs> a yep. little bit. But it's also not, you're almost married. Like, you're not almost anything. You are something. Being engaged is a whole thing in and of itself. And it it's a it's a major um, step in a relationship uh, that isn't actually about a wedding. You know, that's that's the byproduct of it. But your engagement isn't about the wedding. It's this this period of time that sets you up before you are legally and whatever, culturally, traditionally bound to this other human being in perpetuity. It's a time to be like, what is that going to look like for realsies? How are we going to navigate that? What skills do we each need to develop before it's super permanent? You know, it, it's a team building exercise. It's... It, the engagement uh, the, or the wedding planning process, that's that's the exercise. But your relationship is the team that you're trying to build. So it's got to be what comes first, not the wedding planning. Yeah. And it's the relationship. Also, you know, it's also really important to note, you know, like we have this tendency and I know I've, and it's because I've seen it so many times in one way or the other, but basically there seems to be this tendency that the entire focus on the relationship almost shifts to wedding, wedding, mm -hmm. wedding, wedding. And then the sad part is that these people will get married and then not even really know who each other yeah. is because that foundation wasn't there. That, that Those yeah. conversations weren't there to begin with. Now, for me, I know most couples do make the decision to live together and be in a committed, you know, relationship by cohabiting. But, you know, in my case with John and I, we made, due to our personal beliefs at the time, we made the decision to not move in together mm -hmm. and one of the most important things um or until our wedding until after our mm -hmm. wedding but one of the thing most important things that um we did was actually premarital counseling mm -hmm. yeah well i mean I exactly so cohabitating is kind of akin to that that engagement process right that's also not saying that somebody has to get married and mm -hmm. have a wedding and become engaged to have a committed relationship but it's this stage of that relationship um that is is just so very key into figuring out what all the future is going to look like why not go into that with a tool belt as well equipped as possible, right? Why not seek out the support that is available? And and I think with premarital counseling too, we have this, I'm sorry, I punched the microphone. We have this idea in our heads of all of those movies that we've seen with the, 
you know, wanting to get married in the Catholic Church and the priest is essentially appraising your compatibility and it's like you have to prove to a stranger that you deserve to get married but you're arguing in front of them and so that gets you into that mm-hmm. scene where somebody's huffy and, and somebody's checked out and angry and you know what is that <laughs> that's, that's just weird it's it, that's media right that's a story to be told for entertainment the reality of it is is saying okay here is a person with experience in helping human beings communicate with each other uh, in ways that they probably have roadblocks between and developing strategies to overcome those hurdles that is just it, it, i mean it's kindergarten Right? <laughs> you're doing marriage kindergarten if yep. you're doing that. Don't skip ahead to, to grade seven. Well, and, you know, like like you were saying, how the Catholic priest and whatever, and there's the video, you know, there's a movie um, to that vein. And, you know, even if you're officiant, if you're choosing to get married mm-hmm. in a religious institution that requires it, even if you're having a civil ceremony, taking that time to sit down with a licensed counselor, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it has the same effect because I don't, you know, speaking from my own Uh, relationship in my own experience when I went through this process it wasn't until John and I got into premarital counseling we didn't there was conversations we didn't even think to have until um, it was our the pastor um, yeah that was marrying us at the time they've asked these questions before they know know, what you need to answer they know what you should be considering before you you know make the big vow exactly and you know it opened up conversations and, and started you know challenging um, as to think about, you know, different ways of looking at each other and learning to compromise. Because I think for, you know, all of us, we come into relationships with our own baggage mm-hmm. and our own preconceived notions about how something should be. And this can very quickly cross over into your relationship and cause friction and cause yeah. drama because, you know, you have this idea You're that this someone is to how. be on the same page as you. Exactly. And a wedding, you know... When we talk about wedding planning, just circling back for a second, it tends to, you know, we talk about wedding drama because weddings tend to bring out drama Mm -hmm. in every way. It amplifies it and it Mm -hmm. makes it so much more present, not only just, um, you know, within your own relationship, but with that of your family. Yeah, I mean, that that whole working to build these strategies, working to do it all, like, it's not like this stuff is going to end. It's just accelerated in this wedding planning process. Us. It's just a little bit more. We, we've talked about this before. The drama is like all these things that you're going to keep on experiencing down the road. It's just sucked into to one little bit. I mean, you're you're dealing with financial conversations that are deeply personal. You're dealing with trying to figure out family dynamics when you've probably been raised in families that operate differently from one another. All of these things are going to be the same battles that you're going to be fighting down the road. It's just that suddenly there's this impetus for the all to come forward and be dealt with right in that very moment. Uh, why not take that for the opportunity it is and be like, all right, here's here's some stuff to, to get us going in a right direction i I think to you know this this time spent through an engagement and and figuring these things out um you know okay again i feel like i do this every single time we talk because i get an idea and i start talking about it and then no got there i got myself back (laughs) much quicker this time yeah round of applause for me The vows. (laughs) The vows are so central. I think when a person who marries people, who asks these questions time and time again, it's because they hear people making these promises to each other over and over again. If you're going to make those promises to each other, you've got to be able to understand the scope of this promise. For me, I'm always going to bring this whole wedding conversation back to the vows. That is that is the core. Mm-hmm. That is everything to me. And, and then that is why it doesn't matter where the wedding happens, who the wedding happens between, whether it's what somebody sees as a wedding or it's something that they see completely different, whatever. To me, it's the fact that you are standing there making a commitment to another human being, um, a life commitment, whatever that looks like, a life and love commitment. Um, those vows honestly how can you how can you make that promise to us another person if you haven't done the work to yep. figure out what those should be if you haven't 
gone through the motions to build that relationship toward the marriage that you want, then what you're starting your marriage out with is I promise to, and you're reading off of a script and you're saying I do and whoop de do mm -hmm. do you, what is it that you just said to that person? Where's the meaning? Where's the intention? Yeah. Where, you know, where is this going? How does know? that translate? How can they hold you accountable and, to the vows that you make to that? And, you know, let's just say the word. You know, I don't think any of us goes into marriage thinking it's going to end one day. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have this vision of, like, we lived happily ever after, and we all know happily ever after can be a whole crazy host of things. But, you know, I think most of us, like, I know for me, like, I hope we get to... You know, we are together until the day we both pass. Yeah. Right? Notebook style. <laughs> Notebook style. Holding hands in bed. Just read a story. Cute little snooze. Never wake up. And, and you know, hopefully Ideal. this person that you're marrying, you want that with. The vows are signifying that. You're mm -hmm. literally committing till death do you part. Mm -hmm. um, as You know, as long as the relationship is... Yeah. working and, and is healthy and, and those sorts of things. But if you're not proactively working towards that as your goal, what yeah. does that in sickness and in health till death do we part thing even really mean? I feel like this is just very Scottish right now too. You know, it's like, I'm a man of my honor. <laughs> I stand by my word that I need at the altar beside you. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I need to go watch some Outlander or something. But you know, it is, it, we have gotten away from our word meaning something. I mean, in our society, we don't really have the same sort of foundation of promises that has been held in different cultures and mm -hmm. and different eras of history um and this is one of those situations where we we just it's this is a whole ceremony and a whole giant industry and a whole incredibly important thing that is entirely centered around giving your word to somebody it's pretty cool like does it mean anything to you we, yeah uh, it's it's i think it's being like okay we're going somewhere. It's leading somewhere important. This is huge. We're engaged, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> we're going to make these promises in X amount of time. This is a big deal. How are we going to navigate this together? Yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. To have that, you know, is basically committing to grow with each other yeah. through the process. To and keep choosing one another. Keep choosing one another. Keep dating. You know, mm -hmm. keep going out, like, you know, just because... Well, Karina, are you suggesting to our listeners that they go on dates with each other, no, how far, no matter how far, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yes. What a random thing. It's not like you've ever done that before. Well, you know, I can tell you 10 years later, John and I still date, it's and we're intentional about it. Because, massively important. you know, as life happens, it's your opportunity to, to come back to each other, to connect intentionally with each other. And it doesn't have to be big, fancy you know, things. It's as simple as saying, okay, like Saturday night, pizza, couch, Netflix, mm -hmm. us, and, yeah. you know, committing to that time. Like, yeah, right? it's, it's not just, it happens every night. It's like, you're choosing. We're choosing to spend this time together. We're choosing to go to the library together and yeah. have a day in the stacks. You know, that was, I winked for those of you that are listening, listening and not <laughs> watching here. Um, but, you know, yeah, like, just it's like how we talked about before too and we'll probably talk about next week uh, in more detail too that that setting it aside so that it's not wedding stuff and it is strictly you time like again you're learning how to commit to moments with a person you're learning how to commit to being present with a person that is the same choice that you're going to be making every single day. Boundaries. Post-wedding. Boundaries, 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 boundaries in everything. Because, you know, you know, I know in our previous episodes, we've talked about the checked out Charlies and we've talked about the perfection patents and why they happen and et cetera. But in a lot of those cases, as we talked about, a lot of it came to a lack of boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's why these things happen. Mm -hmm. And as you're, it's saying that we're going to, you know, potentially set aside time, whatever works for your relationship, but it's, we're not, it's not all wedding all the mm -hmm. time, 24 seven mm -hmm. for the one year, two year, three years, however long mm -hmm. you're engaged for and saying that we're going to take this time to still continue to do life together. The wedding will happen when the wedding happens, mm -hmm. but we're, we're going to be super intentional yeah. about this, but also Speaking of boundaries, yeah, I think 
you know, it's obviously not in just our, the relationship that you have. It's in, you know, the relationship and the dynamics with your own family, starting from that moment that yeah. you share the news yeah. with your family. Yeah, we finally figured out that this is a really big thing. Did you learn that in the last 15 minutes that we've been telling you, like, <laughs> this is a big thing? <laughs> Um, yeah. And, and I think one of those major reasons to wait on telling people is so that you can establish those boundaries because the more you practice being able to honor them and, and understand another person and hold space for them, the easier it's going to be for you to honor your own boundaries with other people outside of that, that person who Mm -hmm. should be your ultimate safe space, right? It's, okay, I've practiced this and I know and you and I have worked at at being okay with whatever direction we've chosen, but we know we're going to get pushback or we know it might not be what somebody else wants. And that can be so, so hard to stand up for yourself, to not feel as though you're being rude. Here's your weekly reminder. Set boundaries. It does not make you a jerk. No. <laughs> there is nothing r- rude about owning your space and your needs and if you've had if you've established that conversation with your partner then they are there or should be there to hold you up when you're reinforcing those boundaries with your loved ones with your family and vice versa you are there to help them Mm -hmm. uphold their own with with all the people that they are engaging with honoring each other helps you honor yourself yeah very much so And, and also you know, like I said, kind of thinking about this, you know, we've talked and we've, we've established our relationship and then now we're going to bring other people into mm-hmm. it. Having those boundaries, really, you know, being each other's, like your, you and your partner being each other's ride and die through mm-hmm. this crazy process of everybody and anybody having an opinion and how to make your wedding yours. Mm-hmm. It's just going to make you make everything so yeah. much stronger in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Your boundaries to not be overrun by somebody else's idea and create distance in your relationship because they're thinking about their interaction with you and not thinking about your interaction with the person you're marrying. You know, as well-meaning as it is to have somebody else's input in these situations, which primarily, if someone is giving you input on your wedding, they probably care about you. Yeah. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Like, as as well-meaning as it is, if it's going to end up coming back between you and your person, you know, that's a pretty good place to draw a boundary. That's a that's a good indication that that there's something that either needs to be or should have been established around that thing. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, you know, as you you transition, okay, you know, you've had this moment, you've taken your time to breathe and you've really kind of started to build these things and you start to share news with people. You know, when people start asking those questions and sharing those opinions, you know, FYI, it is okay to say, A, we don't know, or yeah. B, we will share news with you when we're ready to yeah. share it. Um, and Especially in this wedding landscape, too, right? Because things are not certain, certainly not the way they were before. No. And if you have a sibling, let's say, who got married five years ago, their experience going through this industry is going to be vastly different from what yours is going to be today. Like, post-COVID, this landscape looks so different than that so being able to help like protect yourself and those relationships as people may not actually totally understand what it is that you're going through and also choosing the people to share with who maybe have a little bit more experience so that they can help back you up in something that is an industry that is going to be very overwhelming right now yeah you know well that's huge we've talked about this before the wedding industry is you know somewhat predatory and full of one-time consumers like uh, you know who just don't really necessarily understand so they you know go and and let people tell them let pinterest tell them the media tell them you know i need all of these Mm -hmm. you know different things and that was prior to covid Mm -hmm. covid has drastically changed the landscape of this industry Mm -hmm. you know Back before 2020 and all of this happened, you know, it was pretty standard process. You would get engaged, you'd set a date, that date was pretty set in stone. Um, you'd plan your wedding, have your wedding, hire your vendors, whatever, move on with your life. Nowadays, there is so few guarantees about anything because not only are we seeing, obviously, you know, all of those couples that have postponed, a, postponed. rescheduled, all of the, yeah. maybe we'll just change our plans entirely and get hitched in the backyard. Like, I, 
you literally know people who've done all three of those things. <laughs> yeah, like we're, we're really dealing with people who, you know, had planned to get married in 2020. Yeah. We're dealing with people who had planned to get married in 2021. Now looking to reschedule their weddings for 2022 and 2023. And if you're part of this new crop of engaged people right now. Yeah, it's not like people stopped getting getting engaged. No. when people stopped getting married for a time. <laughs> yeah, and, and so basically what we're seeing right now is literally what I'm referring to as the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. Because not only do we have this massive influx of consumers, we're dealing with supply chains, supply chain issues. We're dealing with numerous vendors who had to close their doors yeah. throughout the pandemic for various, for obvious reasons, um, because they couldn't continue to operate or function. So now we're dealing with also with a market that has less options mm -hmm. available and so and we know that more things are going to crop up too because the demand is going to be obvious i mean hey maybe we're giving you ideas right now but you know pre-covid when you had those businesses that just couldn't sustain through covid there was experience there and a business starting up right now may not have that same level of experience may not have that same level of um understanding of the industry and you know like you just take a big gamble on on certain situations being like, hey, I don't actually know if you know what you're, you know, talking about, but you have a similar vibe to this person that I really wanted and they're booked up for the next three years and I just really wanted to get married on this date and you're available, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it down and here's the money and whatever. And oh, great. This is somebody I should not have been working with because of so many things. I mean, whether it's just like you don't know what it was that you wanted when you booked them, whether the contracts aren't there, if it was a friend of a like there there are so many things that can go wrong with that. It's it's so so important to be a very savvy consumer, especially yeah. walking into the market right now. Um because it is in such upheaval you know and when I say savvy I'm talking about checking you know checking people's reviews mm -hmm. um I'm talking you know do they have reviews making asking them outright if they're a newer business what kind of experience do they have in the industry because don't get me wrong we all started somewhere mm -hmm. and I did a ton of event planning prior to becoming a wedding planner mm -hmm. and I you know slowly built my portfolio of weddings yeah. um in that way but you know there's definitely making sure that you are you know, checking with that person to make sure it's not some sort of predatory thing. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's asking you for a credit card before they give you any information like quotes or contracts or things like that, that is a big red flag. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I, I turn and run. You know, I, I sadly had a somebody reach out to me not too long ago who literally had a massive deposit for an elopement package that she found on Google. Um, literally. Um, you know, just they disappeared overnight. Their website disappeared. They disappeared, and all of a sudden, now she's dealing with this nightmare of, um, you know, trying to find a you know a replacement because yeah. she just decided to trust something. Yeah. Right. So it's so so important to be super super savvy and request those things and do your due diligence. And I've yeah. said that I say this before, and I know it's a super corny phrase. Lawyers would probably like. Either roll their eyes or laugh at me, one of the two, I don't really care. But it's covering your assets. Because weddings are a risky business. It's an event, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. It's making sure that not only, you know, you have those contracts in place, that you have written communication mm -hmm. that clearly states what you what you yeah. expect from each If you party. talk about something, a change on the phone with someone, that is okay. But send an email follow-up confirming we discussed this, this, and this, making yes. changes to that on this date, etc. Thank you. Also, is being really super and hyper aware about especially, especially on-site vendors being insured. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, when I say on-site vendors, I'm talking about the vendors that'll be with you at your wedding on your wedding day. Mm -hmm. So this would be venues, planners, florists. Uh, rental companies, photographers, videographers, making sure that they mm -hmm. have that in place to protect you. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, it's just about protecting themselves as much as it is about protecting mm -hmm. you as the consumer. It's also purchasing I mean, your own wedding insurance. Yeah, too. frankly, too, just like you're saying, like, it's about protecting you. About, you, you don't want to work with somebody who hasn't done the work to protect themselves, too, right? Yeah. Like, just because somebody, just because a, a service or a product provider is covering their own assets does not mean that they're predatory. <laughs> In fact, it might mean the opposite as long as there is equal support for you as the client in all of their uh, contracts and, and you know, verbiage and all of that. 
But yeah, the, the wedding insurance, uh, because, w okay, what is wedding insurance? Why don't we, because I'm sure that, that we have some listeners who are like, wait, wait, I can get insurance for my wedding. Well, wedding insurance comes in many different forms, but primarily what we're looking at is liability insurance. Um, standard packages tend to be somewhere around the $5 million mark. And the reason that it is important to now... Uh, just, you know, side note, there is other coverages that you can look at, like cancellation insurance, which I can tell you no company that offers cancellation insurance will cover you for COVID. So don't think that's an option. But it could be things like uh, photography. So if mm -hmm. your photographer, there's like, uh, let's say your photographer's photos somehow get lost or destroyed, the insurance company would pay to have that reshot for you. Um, obviously, those memories would be lost, but at least you have that covered. So there's all sorts of other little coverages. Yeah. But when we talk about wedding insurance, wedding insurance, what we're primarily talking about is liability coverage, especially if there's, you're serving liquor mm -hmm. at your wedding. Um, that will drastically change what your premiums will be if you're having a dry wedding versus um, yeah. liquor. Because You so, definitely don't want to have the most perfect day of your life and then spend the wedding morning you know, visiting a friend in the hospital after a car accident. Well, and it even goes one step further. So if you have a wedding, um, and let's say your great uncle, great uncle George decides to get drunk and drive and he goes out and he kills somebody because he got drunk at your wedding not only are you liable as the host of the wedding your venue is liable and whoever provided the liquor so whether that was the venue or bartending or catering service as well as planners your planner if you choose to have one are also mm -hmm. liable in that circumstance so it's making sure that you're really like i said just covering yourself because you don't want to get married and all of a sudden be dealing with a huge lawsuit on top of your heads and that whole like chain reaction is the perfect evidence for why you want to work with people who are doing their due diligence to protect themselves as well right because they're thinking about that whole potential situation that might unfold and they're going like okay you know we've seen some close calls here i've i've learned from this this mistake here and i am laying down the groundwork so that i know my client will be able to be satisfied with the service i'm providing because i have done this work but you know like it, it it just might mean that you might have to make a little bit of alterations to your expectations going forward throughout this planning process it's not to say that you will not get the wedding of your dreams it's not to say that it can't be the perfect day whatever perfect means but it does mean that maybe off season or weekday or a morning wedding you know like things that are typically less popular or spots that get booked a little bit less depending on the venue I mean if you're booked all the time you're probably booked all the time <laughs> but you know you're going to be able to bring in the things that the elements that you really really want the things that are going to make the moment perfect if you have a little bit more flexibility on some of the other things that are just typical yeah, very much. Um, you know, especially if you are wanting, you know, considering the landscape right now, if you are wanting to get married sooner than 2023, 2024, mm -hmm. 2025, um, because of the the landscape of the industry right now, yeah. um, is being flexible on those things. Because typically, you know, so for those that, you know, are probably coming into this going, huh? So typically in, in North America, Edmonton especially, Canada especially, we have wedding seasons, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that for us in Edmonton typically looks about mid-May, maybe early May, um, which is just about when the snow stops, mm -hmm. all the way through to the end of October, which is which just, when the snow <laughs> starts. <laughs> just about when the snow starts. Um, it varies a little bit depending on where you are in the world. You know, obviously the Caribbean, their high season would be the opposite mm -hmm. of ours, um, but very much. Um, which means it's high season somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but during high season, we definitely see, especially on weekend dates, a higher uptick in yeah. demand. So therefore, you're going to pay no money, more money for those things. You're going to have less options available to you, especially if you're approaching this, mm -hmm. you know, coming into the market right now and competing with all the couples who are trying to rebook right now from 2020 and 2021 into 2022. Um, but yeah, if you have those flexibilities, that, that flexibility, you can really accomplish so much. There's also, and in full disclosure, shameless plug here, <laughs> um, but you know, there is other options that you can look at. What? I can get married in a way that's completely difficult, diffi difficult, 
Difficult. Different. <laughs> wow, people, it's been a long day. My little commercial voice didn't even pay off for us. Yeah, there are alternatives, such as I've heard of this thing called pop-up weddings. Do you know anything about those, Karina? Very much so. So there is, um, you know, obviously there's various pop-up solutions that have popped up. <laughs> oh, I'm using pop a lot. Um, over the pandemic <laughs> to allow you to get married. But um, right now we are just prepping to launch in January. So whenever you hear this, we may or may not be live with it. <laughs> but um, we are going to be launching our own series of pop-ups that are a little different from the norm. Yeah. Where we have um, set dates for each event. And on those dates is typically a two-day event. We will marry six couples in two days because we're crazy people um, <laughs> while providing them with a luxury experience. Yeah, um, so we're not, we've, we've, we've seen and love the idea of these smaller scale pop-ups that are big on affordability and allow you to have so many trimmings that you may not otherwise on either short notice or short budget or whatever it is. Um, they exist and they're out there and they are incredible options and we highly encourage you to check those things out. But if uh, you want the whole darn shebang and you want to lift not a finger <laughs> yeah um luxury pop-ups are uh, uh yeah definitely an excellent option because you to know investigate anything that we do we always got to think a little bit outside the box mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. and so very much with our pop-up um experience that we're working on building for you is by the way intimate wed pop-up weddings is uh is what those are <laughs> give us a, a peek on um, Instagram. Um, at Intimate Web Pop-Ups, by the way. <laughs> but what those are very much going to be is to give an alternative to couples that want to have that luxury, especially in a low end, because mm -hmm. the, your guest list would be typically limited um, to around 10, to probably under 20. It's going to vary depending on what experience you sign up for. But even particularly with COVID and different restrictions, that's kind of what we've grown a little bit accustomed to. Very much. It's becoming something that is slightly preferred for many people and it might also be your working option depending on where you are and the pandemic situation in your locale. Yeah, and our entire goal through these experiences that we're creating is to provide uh, very much a very complete experience that goes above and beyond the standard pop-up that's mm -hmm. um, available right now. Um, and also include, you know, include a lot of services that are typically mm -hmm. included in most pop-ups, provide a longer experience, and really make it so that you don't have to lift a finger. The only thing that we are intending to ask of our couples who are participating in these experiences are really... The three things. And those three things are um, invite your guests, which we will provide you the invitations as yeah. well to invite your guests, um, as well as fill out a very simple, relatively simple questionnaire, um, and buy wedding insurance, which we'll walk you through, mm -hmm. and of course also arrange your attire and marriage license. Sorry, so five yeah. things. If you, um, if you want to make that, <laughs> that legal. Yeah, no, I do like that you said the one thing is three things. <laughs> it's five things. <laughs> that's my... <laughs> That's my favorite thing. We have one thing, and it's three things. It's and that's five things. Um, <laughs> but still, the easiest one, three, five things ever that you could do to plan a wedding. Uh, yeah, so there are options. Like, people have... The COVID situation has made people so creative. Mm -hmm. um, people are coming up with brilliant ideas, like intimate web pop-ups. I don't know where those girls got the idea. Um, you know, I, I think there... Is as long as you're willing to broaden the scope of what it is that you're looking at, looking for, there are going to be so many options. It's just about doing things a wee bit differently. There's there's the potential for civil ceremony at a courthouse and then doing a big party later. That's pretty common. There's the potential for post-it noting it in the scrub room like your Derek and Meredith on Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> 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 whatever you want to do <laughs> yeah also destinations honestly as we people are yeah. starting to travel again destination weddings are coming more and more yeah. into play you know it's really starting to think about your your options and thinking about the things that you can do and you know going on a trip taking maybe a small group of your family and closest loved yeah. ones and take them on a trip and happen to get married while yeah. you're there because I, I don't know about you but i am so tired of not going anywhere um, <laughs> so an excuse to travel i'm there at this point heck yeah <laughs> um 
but you know definitely if you're flexible if you're open if you're thinking about something beyond the traditional um you know there is so much more that you can do yeah thanks covid honestly <laughs> this has been, been a real opportunity for people to also acknowledging the immense pain that this worldwide pandemic has caused in all seriousness um there are things that arise out of major upheaval um creativity is something that always you know rears its beautiful head in situations of uh major strain and strife and um this has been something that has sort of just been almost not a wake-up call well yeah maybe for tons of people a wake-up call also just permission to do things differently very much to think differently and you know and i think you know so many people are just really when you say do things differently and actually have the weddings that they want yeah you know and not let um loved ones opinions change that yeah. and um so that I, goes right back to that that first minute right this is what we're saying and right before you tell anybody this is what this is this is why you want to do that groundwork this is why you want to take that breath and set those priorities and set those boundaries and figure out okay what does this mean for us going forward because i mean if you start from that point of open-mindedness can you imagine how much easier it's going to be to plan a wedding than it is to start from something totally prescribed and then have the pandemic hit and you yep. change your plans. Like this is a major opportunity to start your engagement off with a gift that so many other people have not gotten. Very much, 100%. And that also sort of leads us to where we're going to go in our next episode, mm -hmm. talking about now that you have sort of set this tone, you've set these boundaries, is how to then figure out what you actually want your wedding to yeah. look like. We're going to have that to be a fun conversation. Because that, that's work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, and how to figure those out. And then also how to communicate those to your loved ones in mm -hmm. a way um, that is going to allow you to have that wedding that you really dream of. Wanting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, exactly. You've you got to listen next week, I suppose. But if you can't wait until then and you really, really want to know more, we do have a free ebook on our website after you get engaged. Uh, you go to unweddingmovement.com. It'll be there and it can, it'll, it'll walk you through every single step of this, break this all down into detail, maybe not quite so rambling and tangentially as we do in the podcasts, um, but certainly give you the tools you need, worksheets, fun quiz to start your engagement journey and get it off on the right foot. Um, but in the meantime, please feel free free to join the conversation on TikTok, on Instagram, um, wherever you find our handle uh, at the Unwedding Movement. What, it's, it's just that Unwedding Movement. I, I shouldn't have lilted up as though there was more coming. <laughs> uh, all right. At Unwedding Movement. At Unwedding, Unwedding Movement. Movement. So yeah, thanks all for right. joining us this week, folks. And until next time, cheers. Find us on the internet at unweddingmovement.com or on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Pinterest at Unwedding Movement. Our podcast episodes are released weekly and available wherever you like to stream. <laughs>